So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, disclaimer, of course, we won't cover that. Basically, we're not treating or curing disease. So when you think about your health goals, you know, it might seem like a little cliche, but do you really have as much energy as you would like? Are you sleeping as good as you'd like? I can't tell you how many patients say that they really wake up around one to three in the morning, or they go to bed and wake up four or five times a night, or they just really don't sleep really well. This program is just excellent for sleep, and it's one of my favorite first starting points, in fact, for a sleep disorder. And then a big pool is weight loss. So a good question, is your weight close to where you want it? I think most of us would say we'd like to lose a little bit at least. And then probably a deeper, more important question, but that often gets buried by these is, are you as healthy as you'd like to be? Now, when you get with your doctor, by the way, at the end of this program, if you have an interest in going through the purification, you want to make sure to get with your doctor and make sure to fill out at least the toxicity questionnaire pre and post detoxification. This will give you a good chance to see where 70, 80% of symptoms that you have today should be gone in three weeks. And you can see that very clearly just in that toxicity questionnaire. It'd be wise to fill out the symptom survey too, which looks more at the body's systems like adrenal, heart, thyroid, blood sugar, pituitary, and it assesses how you're doing in those areas. When you look at pre and post in those areas, it can be pretty dramatic. So I'd encourage you to fill out that form as well if you can. On the toxicity questionnaire, by the way, the front side is your risk of toxicity. The back side, which is shown here, is your risk of exposure to toxins. Now, this hopefully will change in 21 days too as you start to realize that there's a lot of toxins being used in your home that may be contributing towards you not feeling very well. Now, one thing I've instructed or taught people for years is to use orange oil as a pesticide. Orange oil you can buy from Lowe's or Tom Thumb. I think you can be a Tom Thumb, but certainly Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's made from orange peel and water. And you simply spray it around your house. Uh, wherever bugs come in, they don't like the smell, they don't come in. You can, you can drink the, the oil, it's very safe. You can spray it on animals but it's a great way to eliminate a lot of those pesticides. So take a look at how you score in this risk of exposure questionnaire and see where you can start to cut back on your toxic exposure. The front side of this questionnaire is where we're gonna see pre and post on the purification program. By the way, don't despair if you don't have this questionnaire, your doctor has that available for you. So there's the symptom survey I mentioned as an example here, group one is sympathetic dominant, group two is parasympathetic. That's referring to the autonomic nervous system. And it's really fun to me as a clinician to see that a lot of these symptoms that you may be experiencing now at the end of the purification program just disappear like keyed up, fail to calm, pulse speeds after you eat, lump in throat or eyes blink often. It's kind of nice to see those symptoms often disappear. So let's begin. Who really needs to detoxify? When you think about that, I think most of us would say almost everyone. Certainly anyone who eats any processed food, drinks colas or sweets. If you eat non-organic produce, unfortunately they are sprayed with pesticide and oftentimes do have a little higher heavy metal content. Meats and poultry it was discovered in the 60s that when they injected uh, growth hormone into chickens, they can make them really big and make more money, money in the market. So it's very common today that your meat has hormones in it as well as toxins. Genetically altered foods, artificial sweeteners, preservatives, additives, dyes. Anytime you get fast food, they're going to be loaded with uh, toxins. Grilling on a barbecue, which who doesn't love that? And that's kind of sad, isn't it? Charcoal broiled or grilled foods. When the fat hits the charcoal, it can spill over into what's called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHS, P-A-H-S. So people that eat a lot of barbecue can also become very, very toxic. Drinking uh, tons of coffee or drinking too much alcohol, drinking processed dairy products or drinking regular tap water, they can all contribute. Others would be things like using petroleum project, and that would be... Uh, 
just things in your in your cabinet or in your in your uh, medicine chest. People that use pesticides, herbicides, hairsprays, candles, air fresheners. I always encourage people to use aromatherapy. You know those air fresheners you buy in the store that are fake are really just putting out toxic gas into your house. If you're just being honest. If you're exposed to new carpet, house that's been recently painted, or furniture, or flooring, there's flame retardants even in your pillow, your mattress. It's in the airlines. It's in the seats in the airlines. It's in the blankets they give you when you fly. If you've had dental fillings or any air cleaning solutions, of course, at home. So, and of course, you could summarize by saying anyone who wants to have more energy, increased weight loss, better sleep, improve mental clarity, decreased sugar cravings, revive libido, overall well being, those people would qualify to really consider closely a detoxification program. One area I want to focus on now that seems to be a big driver. For the purification program is weight loss. I think it's the most ethical way to really achieve your weight loss goals, or at least support those goals. Lots of fads out there. You've probably been involved in a few of those fads where they you might lose weight very quickly, and then unfortunately, when you come off the product or you can't sustain that way of life, then you gain the weight back, and it's very, very frustrating. Just the always the honest truth is, there's no shortcut. But by going through a purification program, it's not uncommon for a man to lose about 10 to 15 pounds and a woman to lose about 8 to 10 pounds. Now, the bigger a patient is, the more they'll lose. I've had patients lose as much as 28, 30 pounds, but they were, of course, quite a bit overweight. But uh, to me, it's real ethical weight loss because it teaches the principles. It gives them a good start. It teaches them the principles of how to maintain this weight loss permanently by getting healthier in your lifestyle. I mentioned the sleep. That's, to me, phenomenal. You'll see some cases as we get in a little later on sleep, too. You ever feel like you're just kind of in the fog, memories poor, things like that? Sometimes, or oftentimes, that can be related to toxicity. So that's another huge area of benefit. It's hard to lose weight when you're craving sugar all the time. So. Um, I think that's another key component as well, of course, is a healthy sex drive in a proper way. And then just overall well-being. Let's take a look at fat, though. You know, when I look, every time I look at this chart, it just floors me. When, if you look here, any state that's in red indicates that more than 35% of its population is obese. Now, what does obese mean? What percentage of body fat do you have to have to be classified as obese? The answer is 30%. So this means that these states here, more than 35% of these states in red, the adults have a body fat comp a composition over 30%. Now look at this. This is 1988. This is 1992. 1996. 1999. There goes Texas. And this is to the year 2000. Now, it's 2013. These stats are more dramatic. It's worse than ever. People are getting heavier and heavier, and it makes it more difficult to lose weight when you're toxic, and here's one of the reasons why. Toxins store in fat. Isn't that interesting? They store in fat primarily at first. The body wants to put it like in closet space to get it out of circulation so it doesn't hurt your organs and your cells. Now, when you try to lose weight, this toxin can be squeezed back out of the cell and go back into circulation. But of course, if you don't detoxify at the same time, it goes back into circulation. You feel sick, you get headaches, flu-like symptoms. You feel lousy, you have no energy. And your body finally says, you're not removing it, get it out of my bloodstream. So it puts it right back inside the fat cells. So a good detoxification program is different. This time we're going to squeeze those fat cells down, make them small, support weight loss. We're going to push those chemicals back into the bloodstream. But this time we're going to catch them with very specific nutrients and very specific herbs that have been used historically and clinically for many years to make sure that those toxins get removed in the stool. 
I'm going to skip ahead just for a slide and give you an idea of what that means. For instance, your liver has two phases of detoxification, phase one and phase two. So when we start this process of detoxification, we're taking a fat-soluble compound, changing it into an intermediate compound that's really more dangerous, really. That's called phase one or cytochrome B450. Once we do that, we have to make sure the body has spe specific vegetables and nutrients like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, to make sure to finish this process up. This is called phase two or conjugation. So this now more dangerous toxin gets made water soluble. If the molecular weight is less than two or 300, it goes out in the urine. If it's greater than two or 300, it goes out with the feces in the stool, in the toilet. This is biochemical biotransformation or detoxification. That's what it is. So when we talk about taking these fat cells and making them small again, we're going to push those toxins out, but this time we're going to make sure they get out into the stool or the urine, into the, uh, out of the body through the water. We're going to do that through using a very specific program of foods, cruciferous vegetables, and herbs, as I mentioned. Now, I want to show you this little video that shows another component that we're going to eliminate for 21 days, and that's a lot of simple and refined carbohydrates. It isn't really that hard, although this maybe sounds hard when you first hear about not having bread or pasta or candy or things like that for 21 days. But I want to show you how much sugar or end result how much sugar is actually in a typical American diet. In fact, this may not be typical of most people. Now, I know by virtue of the fact that your chiropractic physician or medical doctor referred you into this presentation, you probably already eat at a better level than most of your peers. But take a look at how much sugar and carbohydrate is actually in the American diet. What I'm going to show you is that your body turns carbohydrate food into sugar. Let's start with a typical breakfast of cereal, toast, orange juice, and a banana. Cereal has about one quarter cup of sugar. Toast has about one quarter cup of sugar. Orange juice has about one quarter cup of sugar. Banana has about one eighth cup of sugar. And that's just breakfast. Let's say around 10 a.m. you get hungry, so you have a snack. Let's say you have a fruit on the bottom yogurt. This fruit on the bottom, low fat yogurt, has a whopping one quarter cup of sugar. And for lunch, let's say you're watching your weight, so you have a skinned chicken breast, baked potato, and some bread. There is no sugar in the chicken. But the potato has a heaping one quarter cup of sugar in it. And the bread also has a quarter cup of sugar in it. So now three o'clock rolls around and you're feeling a bit tired, so you have a few pieces of candy and a soda pop. The candy is about a quarter of a cup of you got it right, sugar. And the soda is about a quarter of a cup of sugar as well. Now for dinner, you're a good low-fat dieter and you're really trying to do the right thing, so all you eat is pasta. Pasta, bread, and a soda. And the pasta, again, is about a quarter of a cup of sugar. The bread, another quarter of a cup. And the soda, about a quarter of a cup of sugar. Now, are you getting a picture? Look at all this sugar in the foods you're eating. Incredible, isn't it? Keep in mind now that these spikes of sugar demand a spike in insulin to push all this sugar out of your bloodstream. Now, that's just one day's work. Multiply that by 365 days, and then by how old you are, and you should be getting a picture of why most of us have had such a hard time losing weight, and why many of us suffer from such a variety of health ailments. Isn't that, isn't that amazing to see how much sugar that people eat? Remember, all carbohydrates do break down into sugar in the body, and of course, some quicker than others. But this can lead to a lot of health problems, of course, weight gain. But also, the sugar is not raw, natural sugar, full of molasses and minerals and iron and potassium. It's just devoid of that. 
So it causes people to become bankrupt nutritionally, absolutely bankrupt. And then it leads to all sorts of health problems. So for 21 days, we're going to help a patient help you to change this, to taste and see how good you can feel in 21 days by eliminating a lot of this. Now, human nature, after the program, people tend to go back to some of this. We hope you don't, but it's human nature too. Cool thing is though, for the first time, maybe ever, you'll know how good you can feel when you start to be a little more watchful of how much sugar comes into the diet. So here's a, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the products involved in the program and, and how easy it is to do. There's four core products, and then there's two or three others that may be suited for your particular case we'll talk about as well. Number one is SP Complete, and that's this powder here. It's a special blend of kale and Brussels sprouts, sprouts and Spanish black radish and milk thistle and some very specific components off of um, our farm in Wisconsin that you take, there's a scooper in here, and you take one scoop, and you uh, actually do two scoops twice a day of this SP Complete Shake. And of course, there's tricks with recipes using frozen food, excuse me, frozen fruit, like berries and blueberries and things like that to make it taste really good. The next product is SP Cleanse, and then there's uh, whole food fiber and gastro fiber and green food. Now, uh, let me go a little further and make sense. So SP Complete, as I mentioned, is a blend of uh, buckwheat, barley grass, alfalfa, brown rice concentrate. It has a little whey protein in it, about 10% is a pure whey concentrate. It also has ginkgo, grapeseed, green tea, red wine extract. I mentioned kale and Brussels sprouts, uh, flaxseed meal. It's got more than that. That's just a little bit of, a, of an example. It actually has over 20 different whole foods. This is the part that supports the elimination pathway. So once those chemicals get uh, put back into circulation, this is part of the reason we're going to catch them and make sure they get out of the body fluidly. Now the next product is called SP Cleanse. You might recognize these are herbs and this is the more aggressive part of the purification program. So juniper berry, red clover, and burdock. Do you recognize those? Juniper, red clover, and burdock. That's the old Hoxie cancer formula. And the reason they chose those is they're very, very powerful uh, detoxifiers of the bloodstream the lymphatic, the kidney, they just start to really purify the system. Of course, we include apple pectin, some barley grass powder. I mentioned Spanish black radish, which is a form of a cruciferous vegetable. Oregon grape and fenugreek. Actually, there's more than that. There's over 20 different whole foods and SP cleanse as well. So it's going to support when those chemicals get pushed back into the bloodstream, we're going to catch them this time and make sure they go into the, to the, to the stool, either through urine or feces. You're going to catch them. Next, you can choose whole food fiber or gastro fiber. Your doctor may choose one or the other for you. Uh, they're both excellent. Uh, whole food fiber is one you just pour into your shake. It's just, it actually is made with beets and carrots from our farm, along with a little bit of fiber from rice, oat, and apple pectin. It's a mixture of soluble and insoluble fibers, so it helps to bulk up the stool, but it also helps to increase good, healthy bacteria. So you may not necessarily need things like acidophilus or bifidobacteria. Gastrofiber is another one. It's a capsule. And for those that can tolerate it, it's really a huge uh, bulker for the stool. You have to drink a lot of water with this one or you get constipated. But it also is a blend of soluble and insoluble fiber. And either one of these two fibers is acceptable. However, be aware that this one may cause constipation in certain female patients for some reason, and your doctor may in fact just choose to use whole food fiber for you. This is actually kind of one of my favorites anyway. Okay, uh, the next thing, by the way, fiber does a lot of good things, and a lot of patients at the end of the purification program will want to stay on SP Complete and the fiber, and I think that's a great lifestyle thing to do because it helps to keep your blood sugar stable, keeps your intestinal bacteria healthy, and it keeps uh, toxins and heavy metals moving through the system, not storing in the system. Finally, SP Green Food, which is a mixture of buckwheat, barley grass, Brussels sprouts, kale, and alfalfa. 
These are deeply nourishing to the organs and they're also detoxifying. So the SP green food is included in the program. And here's how your actual regime works. On the first seven days, days one through seven, and of course, you'll have a book, by the way, and you'll have instructions that help you with this. Don't think you have to write down notes. And by the way, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, just ask your doctor. We'll make sure he gets a copy of this full presentation in PDF, and you can have it as well. The SP Cleanse capsules, this is the hardest part of it. You have to take seven capsules three times a day. That's 21 capsules a day for the first seven days. I know when you first hear that, it's like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of pill swallowing. It is. Um, but that's just seven days. That's done with. You don't have to do that again. You could open those up and put them right inside the shake as well. A lot of patients do that. The only possible negative thing with that is the SP Cleanse has um, a fair amount of cayenne pepper, and that can make it taste a little spicy. If you like cayenne, or, or some, some patients will make this like a uh, V8, then that's perfect just to throw it right in there. By the way, the reason we use cayenne, cayenne pepper, as you know, increases circulation dramatically. So what we're doing there is we're making sure that all of these nutrients get to every little cell and capillary in your body best we can. So SP Complete, you'll do one, sh one shake two to three times a day. Gastro fiber, whole food fiber. If you do gastro fiber, you're going to take three capsules three times per day. If you do the whole food fiber, you're going to do one tablespoon two to three times a day. On day eight, so that was the first seven days. On day eight, SP Cleanse is over with. You don't have to keep taking that. You've gone through that entire bottle. Now you begin taking SP Green Food, five capsules twice a day. That's 10 capsules a day. These you can simply open up and put right inside the SP Complete Shake. You don't have to swallow capsules if you don't want to. You won't even notice those are in there. You still keep taking one SP Shake two to three times a day, and you keep on your fiber as well. That's how simple it is. Now, some patients may want to add protein, a little extra protein into the program. If you're really heavy working out or training or in a very physically demanding job, you're going to need a little extra protein. If not, and you want to lose the most weight, if you'll drink two or three, up to three shakes a day of the SP Complete, you may not need to add in that whey pro complete. But be aware, if you start to feel a little too tired. It may just be a little low protein. You may want to add a half a scoop or a scoop of that whey, whey protein in into your program. So what about the dietary part? I love Hippocrates, one of our founding fathers in medicine. He said, let food be thy medicine and let thy medicine be food. And that's certainly what we're doing here. And let's go further on that. On the first 10 days, we're encouraging you to eat only vegetables and fruits. It's hard to get not get some canned food. Be aware if you do get canned food, make sure there's no preservatives. Make sure there's no sugar and certainly no high fructose corn syrup. Most things should be fresh, fresh or frozen. So, and also, especially if your goal is weight loss or you have blood sugar issues, try to keep your fruit to one third the amount of vegetables that you cook them, it does, but most of the time if you just do lightly steamed or just put them in a pan under medium low heat with some butter, coconut oil, your vegetables taste so good. In fact, in many cases like certain cruciferous vegetables and garlic, when you heat them, the chemistry changes and creates whole new health improving compounds. So don't be afraid of doing things a little cooked. By the way, who wants to eat raw kale or Brussels sprouts? But I promise you, if you haven't tried it, if you put Brussels sprouts and kale in with butter and sea salt in a pan, it's absolutely addictive. So 50% raw, 
50% steamed is a really good pattern for life. If you can do that for life, you'll see dramatic health benefits if you'll just do half your food raw, other half steamed. Things that are easy to do raw, by the way, are salads. Dark green leafy salads with some onions, some carrots, things like that on it. Makes it really easy. Whereas your cruciferous vegetables, kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, steam or lightly stir fry those, that makes a difference there. Now, you can eat as many of those vegetables as you'd like. One of the secrets to success is don't let yourself get hungry. Eat frequently throughout the day. Helps to regulate your blood sugar and it avoids uh, getting too, too hungry. Drink at least two SP Complete Shakes a day. If you're gonna skip a meal, drink another SP Complete Shake. It's very satisfying. It's, it's really like eating a whole meal in itself anyway. I think there's 80 calories per SP Complete not counting the fruit you might add in. Um, I prefer we don't use stevia. I think I'm going to mention that coming up, so I'll hold off on that thought. What about salad dressings? Well, you can make your own with balsamic vinegar and olive oil or a little uh, mustard. Make sure the mustard doesn't have junk in it. Most mustard doesn't. Mustard's pretty good. But there are some good brands you can buy, too. Just be careful and make sure there's no high fructose corn syrup, no hydrogenated oils. Try to avoid things like canola oil and vegetable oil, things like that. But, uh, and if you're gonna be out at a restaurant, by the way, man, I've done this for many years, just take your little bottle of dressing with you, put it in your purse or your pocket. You can discreetly pour it on your salad in a restaurant. And they don't really care, it just saves them money as well, as long as it's discreet. So we mentioned, uh, Butter's okay, please no margarine. I hope most of you know, probably, margarine, much like plastic. I think it's a dangerous compound, not healthy. But you can use butter. And I know it says minimally. I'm gonna say you can even go a little bit beyond that. Butter is full of conjugated linoleic acid or CLA. Now don't go nuts, you don't wanna eat a half a stick a day. But you can certainly take enough butter to make your vegetables taste really good. And, and don't be afraid of using it. It's uh, full of CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, that shrinks fat cells. Butter shrinks fat cells. And by the way, coconut oil also shrinks fat cells. So when you use those in your diet and lifestyle, you'll find that you have a tendency to lose more weight. Olive oil is excellent. You mix that with a little balsamic vinegar and you make a nice dressing. By the way, a little avocado. You can have an avocado per day. If your goal is weight loss, be aware you might want to keep that down or at least a half of one. Um, they're extremely healthy, by the way, and good for you. You don't want to be on a fat-free diet. But we're kind of in a special state, almost like rebooting your computer for these 21 days. So we don't want to get the body into too much fat during the 21 days. So don't go hog wild on these things. You know, Be moderate, especially if weight loss is a goal. We'll talk about the tuna oil. A menu coming up in a moment. Now, what about sweeteners? I used to say, and I left this on here purposely, I used to say that stevia and inositol were okay. Inositol is a non absorbable sugar. Standard process carries it. We use it in certain uh, illness conditions to help support patients, like with nerve damage or emotional things. But it's really still an isolated compound. I prefer that we use raw honey. Stevia, this is one when I started really looking closely at it, it made me a little more nervous and queasy to my stomach. So I'm going to recommend that you do not use stevia. That'll probably come as a surprise to a lot of you. I encourage you to do your own research. If you do use it in the 21 day program, I don't think it's the end of the world. I just hope that you'll do a little more research into what this stuff really is. The old American Indians used to grind up the leaves and put it directly on your food, that's fine. What we're doing is not that. We're, they're taking stevia leaves and processing it and pulling out stevicides, chemicals, out of stevia and then selling that to you to make things taste sweet. Isn't that really the same thing they do with sugar cane to get sugar? Why is sugar bad? Sugar's not bad if you eat the whole sugar cane. But if you're taking uh, glucose and fructose out of sugar cane, losing all the other beneficial components, then you're getting into health issues. And I think that's what they're doing with stevia. So just as a word of caution, do your own research, but I think that's an issue that you should be aware of. 
Now, on day 11, so that's the first 10 days. And by the way, I'm going to show you some recipes in a moment that will just make your mouth water. You're not going to starve on this program. You're going to have some really good, tasty, satisfying food. But first 10 days, no meat. On day 11, you can start adding in a little meat. Now, ideally, I'd like you to focus in on cold water fish or free-range chicken. Can you have a little red meat, especially organic? Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that a bit. You know, once or twice a week is not a bad idea anyway. But for the purification, your best bet's going to be cold water fish. In fact, if I can make a suggestion to you, the more fish in life you eat, probably the longer, healthier life you'll have. If you look at almost anyone or any culture or any study where they eat more fish, you see that their whole lives are just far healthier. So that being the case, why not try to focus in on fish, cold water fish, the first yeah, 21 days. By the way, how much do you eat? Three to four ounces is about the size of your palm. So if you're a girl, you're going to have a smaller palm than a big guy that's six foot four. So be aware that you want to eat meat about the size and thickness of your palm. That's a good rule of thumb for life, by the way. And you'll find that you're very satisfied. And then if you'll eat twice that many uh, vegetables, you'll have a good, healthy lifestyle and feel really good. Now, what about beverages? Well, first of all, please, please, please do not neglect drinking water. You've got to at least drink half your body weight in water every day. And why is that? Water helps to remove poisons. If you don't drink water, as we start to dump these chemicals out of storage in your fat into circulation, they're going to go through the liver, they're going to be processed and go into the urine or the stool. If you don't drink enough water, the body is going to pull water out of your colon to dilute those, those toxins and you get constipated. Next thing that happens is you're going to become poisoned in essence. Those toxins are going to reabsorb and make you sick. So please, please make sure you drink at least half your body weight in water to help flush those toxins out of your system. You're going to urinate heavily the first day or two, and that's as the body starts to lose fat. It starts to bring insulin levels down, glucose levels down, and starts to remove those toxins. You're going to really do a lot of flushing those first two or three days probably. I prefer spring water or mineral water is best, but if you don't have access to that, that's okay. Just drink water, whatever water you can. But Obviously, these waters will be less toxic and better for you. You can add lemon or lime. That's fine. Green tea. Green tea enhances detoxification, so knock yourself out. If you like green tea, you can drink almost as much as you want. Just be aware if you have trouble sleeping, back it up before bedtime. It's really low in caffeine, frankly, and it's got another compound in it that kind of negates the caffeine, so you shouldn't have trouble there. What foods do you avoid? Well, if it's something we haven't discussed already, you want to avoid it. Now, here's where you might get a little deflated at first. You're thinking, oh, I can't have fast food or a lot of grains. What, no bread, no pasta? No. Just for 21 days. You can do it. It's just 21 days. It's not forever. No hydrogenated oils. No alcohol. No caffeine, ideally. I know green tea has a little bit of caffeine, but it's really not enough to cause any, any concern. No soda, no tobacco, ideally. Now, why would we say no nuts, seeds, or beans? Those are healthy. They really don't hurt detoxification in general. But the problem is twofold. One is they're hard to digest. We're trying to rest your digestive system for the first time in years. So we want to give your body a break from these things that are harder to break down. Number two. A lot of beans can be high in carbs and people end up eating a lot of beans and they end up gaining weight in the 21 days. So we want to hold off on that. Third thing is a lot of nuts and seeds are over roasted and they can be carcinogenic and uh, they're out. Because they just flash roast them in essence, they can create other health issues. Now we say lentils are okay. Why do we say that? Lentils are kind of a unique animal. Lentils are approved for this program. If you eat one or two cups a day, they're extremely rich in protein. In fact, if you'll eat lentils, you may not need that whey protein we mentioned earlier. It's about 18, 19 grams per cup of lentils. 
They're also extremely low in, in carbohydrates, and extremely high in protein, high in fiber, like 17, 18, 19 grams of fiber per cup. They are diabetic type 1, type 2, or somebody that has hypoglycemia. They're a dream product for blood sugar. So we have, as you can imagine, we have some great lentil soups for the purification program that you'll love. It's extremely filling as well. So lentils are a go, but please, no other nuts, seeds, or beans. Sometimes you feel like Mark Twain. He says, the only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want, to drink what you don't like, and do what you'd rather not. <laughs> I think sometimes we can feel that way. But let me show you some of the foods you can have in the purification program. Look at this. You can have this on days 1 through 10, first 10 days. By the way, if you don't have these recipes, we've got tons of these available through your doctor. Fennel leek soup. Here's the lentil soup. This is phenomenal. It's okay to have chicken broth, especially if you get one organic and no MSG. There's certain ones that are best for the first 10 days. And then on day 11, you could have things like quick homemade beef soup. You could have even Cajun salmon on day 11. Grilled chicken with cherries. So you can see we've got just, that's just a, just a little tidbit of the recipes that you have on the purification program. So you're not really starving. The trick is, by the way, is to make seven days worth of food first before you begin the purification program. So let's say you're starting next Monday or this Friday. Take Thursday night or Sunday night, make up one whole week's worth of food and freeze it. Get it all ready to go so that when you come home at night or you have lunch, you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat. That's the worst thing in the world is to come home hungry and then have all that junk food still in your house tempting you. Get it out of the house and then have your good foods already pre-made, ready to go for the purification program. And even some snacks. You'll find these are kale chips. We've got some great recipes for kale chips or asparagus fries, hummus and snap peas. So it's not a torture program. In fact, you'll probably eat better and be more satisfied than you do normally. If you don't have these uh, menus, again, ask your doctor. We've got weeks one, week two, and week three, and we have the actual recipes for every one of these as well. So um, I know weight loss is a major goal for a lot of patients, so I want to focus in on a couple things to help amplify that for you. At the end of your purification program, your doctor can kind of help direct you into different body types that may, in fact, uh, contribute what they call endocrine weakness. For instance, this guy here, that's more of a liver weakness or stress. Heavy all over is more thyroid. This is more ovary or estrogen dominant with the bigger hips. And then the weight in the belly like this, but more sagging weight, fat in the shoulders. Those are classic for uh, adrenal and high cortisol stress type weight gain. So you're going to likely lose weight on this purification. Most patients do. Can't promise you will, but most patients do. If you don't, please don't get too discouraged. I know that can be very discouraging, but please don't get too discouraged. Just keep focusing on getting health, healthy. And I promise you, a healthy body will start to achieve a healthy weight. So, but at the end of your purification program, your doctor can help determine where you might be in this area and give you further nutritional support from Standard Process or MediHerb to help really support the weak endocrine system and help you lose a lot of that weight in specific areas as well. Be aware that you can't get around the fact that portion control or calories plays a role in weight loss. All the fads in the world for many, many, many years try to get around that fact and it just doesn't work. It's never worked. I doubt it ever will. The cool thing is, is when you're eating foods like you're eating on this 21-day purification program, is you're eating foods that typically have less calories, but they have higher nutrient density. That's one of the secrets to weight loss. Foods that are lower calories but nutrient dense versus the foods we typically eat, like we saw in that movie earlier, that is calorie dense and nutriently bankrupt. So as you start to eat these foods we talked about, these really good healthy foods here, you're gonna find that your body has a tendency to normalize its weight anyway. So it's really nice to know that. What if you think you don't have any willpower and you're already craving bread, pasta, candy, Cokes, ice cream, desserts? Thankfully, there's an herb called gymnema, 
that can be a lifesaver. You definitely want to ask your doctor for this. I recommend everyone include it in their purification program. In fact, stay on it after the program and stay on it for at least a couple years. It's an herb out of India. It's very safe. It helps to maintain healthy blood sugar level, but it knocks out your craving for pasta, bread, candy, Cokes, ice cream, dessert, mashed potatoes, potato chips, things like that. Doesn't mean if you eat those, you won't like them. It just means you don't have as much craving for them. It's perfect for weight loss. So if you're already kind of thinking that you're going to have difficulty with sweet cravings, just tell your doctor, uh, ask your doctor if it's appropriate for you to add Genema in. It's a very safe herb, by the way. It can be used with drugs. There's no danger in using it with uh, drugs or older people or younger people. It's almost like a food. It's been used for about 4,000 years in Indian medicine, Genema. So make sure to ask your doctor about it. This is what the bottle looks like. Typical dose is three to four tablets a day. So you can either do two tablets twice a day or one tablet three times per day. Just because this is so important, I mentioned earlier, if you don't drink enough water, you're gonna get constipated, you're gonna get toxic, you're gonna to feel like you have miserable flu. So please don't do that, drink lots of water. If you still get constipated, if you have a juicer, get a beet with the leaves and everything and just juice the whole beet, the whole leaves and everything. You've gotta make sure your bowels are moving uh, at least two or three times a day through the whole program and really frankly, naturally they will. Other necessities, you're gonna start sleeping probably very well. Your body may want to shut you down for 9, 10 hours even. If you have that luxury, go ahead and let your body do that. It's doing some repair. Especially if you only sleep 4 or 5 hours a night now. You're in a sleep debt. The body may try to take this time when it starts to repair and put you back into a state of a refreshed repair. By the way, when you start sleeping really good again, life is different. There's nothing more powerful than getting good sleep. And this is the single best program I've ever seen to help support that. Another area is patients that are looking to lower uh, their cholesterol or get off their cholesterol drugs. Now I have to be careful here because legally we cannot tell you uh, any program will lower your cholesterol or to come off your cholesterol drugs. You always want to work with your doctor on that. I'm just going to share with you some pre and post stories here that patients have sent in through the years. We've had thousands and thousands and thousands of these throughout the country. And I think the reason it works so well is that there's reasons why the body might raise cholesterol, including stress, sex hormone production, free radical damage, people who don't eat a lot of good healthy fats, the body tries to increase cholesterol. We're changing all that in the purification program. So I think that's why you see these dramatic changes. But if you would like to come off your statin with your doctor's oversight, I encourage you to do a pre and post cholesterol test, just like these patients did. When you do your post test, then you can talk to your doctor to see whether it's appropriate to come off the cholesterol. But take a look at a few of these. This was July 1st, September 15th. Look at the cholesterol levels. 263, a little uh, over three weeks, 178. Look at the triglycerides, 181, 107. LDL 174 to 107. Take a look at this one. April 1st, April 23rd, roughly 22 days. Cholesterol 230, 185. Triglycerides 145 to 85. You can see heart risk ratio goes down too. Another one, March 23rd to April 18th. Cholesterol level 231, now down to 176. By the way, doctors will almost always tell patients to go on statins when their cholesterol is above 200. Whether that's a real issue or not is another discussion. But for now, 176, most doctors will tell their patients, whatever they're doing, keep it up. You may not need a statin. So uh, make sure to ask your doctor about that. But just notice in all these cases, they did come down below that 200 mark. And it's very, very possible here as well. As well. Look at this dramatic one here. 344. Post -pro program was 182. This was April 9th to May 7th. Isn't that a dramatic difference? Look at these triglycerides. This is basically a diabetic or, or a pre diabetic. 787 to 108. Look at that heart risk ratio, how dramatic that change was. Really nice change. So, what to expect? 
we talked about it. I think we've summarized it pretty well. Better life, more energy, feeling more like you used two years ago. Let me share a couple of patient stories with you. Oh, and I forgot to add those in. Oh, my goodness. I, I can see if I can find it real quick on the computer while we're answering questions. But um, the other thing I want to share with you before I take questions is your doctor can sign you up for support emails. And what this is, is every morning you'll wake up with an email with reminders of what you're going to take and how much and how you should feel and tips and tricks and explanations of what is taking place. It's a wonderful service that's available for you through your doctor. And of course it gives you uh, recipes of the day and it also gives you access to Allison if the doctor wants that support. Allison is an expert at supporting you. Now she's not a clinician, will not answer other health issues. She just helps you to get through the purification program. And uh, she's excellent with recipes. For instance, we had one guy that was feeling great. He loved it, but somewhere around day 15, he was craving potato chips. And he said he's a chip guy, and if he doesn't get chips, he's just going to quit. Allison wrote back and said, no, we can't let you quit. But here's what you can do. I think she taught him how to make those kale chips. But then she also taught him how to make jicama, Mexican potato, with a little guacamole. And he made a nice dip that was very satisfying. And of course, helped him to endure the last few days of his program. So you can see, she's really a great, great help for you. Okay, uh, there's a purification booklet your doctor can get for you. Uh, remember that you can do anything for 21 days. It's not forever. It's not that difficult. I encourage you to do it at least once a year, maybe twice a year, twice a year. And we're here for you as well as your doctor to help support you to make sure you make it all the way through the 21 days and achieve your, your goals for better health, better sleep, weight loss management, things like that. So your next step would be to make sure to get back with your clinician that referred you into this presentation tonight and ask them to schedule your first appointment. This will ensure that your products will, are ordered on the way and then they can do pre and post testing and exam for you. Okay, so Daisy, I'm going to real quickly find some of the testimonials in another presentation. Okay. And I'll be happy to entertain questions, at least while I'm pulling this up. Okay. Um, if anyone has a question, please feel free to type them in. You should have a, a control panel where you can ask questions, um, and we'll, we can get those, those questions. And also, we have, a, as a reminder, we have, for those of you that are wanting to go through the program, we're going to have another webinar um, on post purification and it's going to be on uh, January 22nd same time it's going to be a Tuesday and at that presentation Kurt is going to tell you what you need to do to maintain the results that you've achieved during the 21 days what you can expect and other uh, protocols that uh, might be helpful for certain conditions uh, that people may be having so um, I still don't see any questions. Are you? Daisy, I'm going to just real quickly okay. run through, let people see these. These are very common. This is, uh, wife and I finished detox last Monday. Haven't felt this good in 20 plus years. A very, very common statement I hear all the time. I mentioned to you earlier about the sleep. You notice here it says, rarely do I wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning and not go back to sleep till 4. Very powerful. Unfair, I know. Men lose about 10 to 15. He lost 15. Wife about 10. Still very ecstatic. But they also made changes in their diet and lifestyle. Uh, remember I mentioned the uh, cholesterol blood pressure medication. In this case, Tim said that his blood pressure and cholesterol was lower to the point where his doctors had taken him off both those medications. He didn't think it was possible to come off that. This one uh, is just a crazy case. She was in a state of overwhelming of fog. Uh, had to take naps daily. It was emotionally I just whacked out. Uh, always had swelling in her hands and feet. She was able to, to the purification, come off three prescription drugs with her doctor's oversight. No longer needed digestive antacids. Um, even helped with her hormonal issues. Cravings were down pretty dramatic. She also lost, by the way, 14 pounds in 21 days. This is the last one I'll go through. This is a pretty dramatic case of Carolyn Mansfield. She said, I wanted to inform you of how my life has changed since detox. She told me it would, but I was skeptical at best. 
I was at a point where I felt like I had no life, exhausted, constantly in pain, depressed because I couldn't lose weight. I was taking approximately 50 to 75 extra strength Tylenol and 40 to 50 Excedrin every week because my joints hurt so badly. I would literally come home from work every day, sit in my chair, fall asleep there, sometimes not getting up until the next day. That all changed the first week I was on detox. For the first time in years, I slept soundly through the night. Not that fitful, restless sleep, but deep, solid sleep all night long. Ankles and hands stopped swelling, my headaches went away, and I had unbelievable energy. I felt like the fog in my head had lifted. I could think more clearly. I now come home from work, cook a healthy dinner, spend quality time with my teenage daughter, and actively involved in, with extracurricular activities, and even have enough energy to exercise. I no longer take any pain medication. I mean nothing. I don't need my prescription diuretic. I lost 26 pounds, and she was quite a bit overweight, so not ever 